Thank you very much. Hi, uh, I'm a Secure Finance founder, Masa. Uh, today, I'm going to introduce Secure Finance and uh, talking about riding the wave of the DeFi revolution and try to introduce what's happening, especially in Asia. Um, so the agenda today is basically, you know, we want to go over the Falcon ecosystem growth with DeFi. Um, I'm from traditional finance and computer science. I believe DeFi is really the first strong use case of the any blockchain smart contract ecosystem. So FEM, of course, DeFi is a key uh, leading driver uh, for the growth. And also, I want to go over the multiple lending solutions and how how you can use it for borrowing or lending and what is the strengths and weakness. And also, I want to highlight um, DeFi has definitely has challenges, and we wanted to provide a solution to that. And also, TradFi is also you know, facing the challenges to adopt cryptocurrencies. So I want to introduce how they're dif uh, difficult. And also, a lot of regulatory trends is happening. Not only the tightening is actually uh, uh, loosening, uh, especially in Asia. Uh, it's really interesting um, contrast between US and um, Asia. And finally, uh, I am end up with uh, how we can uh, bring in a retail grade DeFi to institutional uh, adoptions. So, um, so looking at the you know, finance ecosystem in general, so Secure Finance try to create a uh, entire finance ecosystem starting from lending market. So loan is our first product, and um, you, know, you know the lending is not only the um, well, this is the basis of the all entire market. But you want to provide a swaps, interest rate swaps, and cross currency swaps, and then we can build uh, FX forwards and derivatives. And also we have options. And if you have all of these plain vanilla products, we should be able to create structured products. Structured product is really interesting, um, as it's a, it's a combination of uh, plain vanilla products to make the um, customized pr uh, plat uh, product for your needs. And also, you know, hedging. Uh, cryptocurrency is pretty, you know, volatile, and people are so worried about price drop or price uncertainty. So we we are seeing a strong demand for hedging the cryptocurrency risks. So those are the entire ecosystem, but it's too too broad, too huge. So how we can build from scratch? So. Um, so now, um, we are so amazed by the growth and in the FEM ecosystem and the Falcon lending markets. In a couple of months, we see a tremendous amount of uh, different group of uh, lending and staking and leasing services, and uh, such as DeFi field staking and leasing, which is great. It's a smart contract base. So I think it's pretty reliable, and it is growing. And also multi-sig field staking and leasing. And also, you know, ha there has been a centralized exchange of Filecoin providers. It is basically has a regulated uh, entity so that providing a high volume and most reliable lending sources, which is quite good. But um, um, I would like to stop here and I think about, is this the all possible lending services, right? What else we can provide? And uh, obviously, Secure Finance is going to try to go main at launch end of this year, by the end of this year, and I want to list, uh, list it here. So we try, I, I'll try to map all, the, all these like, possible lending services and then in the finance uh, landscape. So here's kind of like a um, white paper. Uh, <laughs> So this is the. This should cover all the markets. So from um, zero year to one year to uh, to the longer maturity, and then this is a yield. So I draw a single uh, curve. This is called yield curve, and uh, basically any interest rates or lending services should uh, be plotted. It mapped somewhere inside of this. And think about it, who is going to be uh, allocate, located here? And uh, so I, I'm using uh, the Ethereum ecosystem, but uh, it's not 
much different um, from Ethereum ecosystem and FEM ecosystem because of the architecture is uh, basically the same. So I'm, I just pick up the kind of uh, famous projects such as Uniswap, Aave, Compound, Yield, and Notional, and also Binance, which is centralized uh, players. And as you can see, it's obviously, it's very <laughs> uh, focused, right? And uh, almost all the DeFi and crypto financial services are staying within less than one year space, which is called money market. Um, this is great. Uniswap is, is brought a huge innovations by bringing in a constant product formula and algorithmic and uh, you know the without intermediary, which is great. And Aave Compound is doing the lending services. But uh, what is this missing piece? Here's a capital market. We call it capital market if this is uh, dealing with more than one year. And who is going to be the service provider like this? So we obviously see this kind of like a, a gap between money market and capital market. And um, usually, banks are playing in this field. Uh, the major reason is because the crypt uh, in a cryptocurrency and a smart contract, it is instant execution is very strong point. So it, spot market is so easy to create and pool based execution is really easy to build. So, but for the long term, more than one year, handling time is really difficult. Uh, more than like, let's say two year loans, how you can ensure the two year later, you know, the repayment, it's really hard. It's, it in, entails the credit risk. So we really need to handle the credit risk and counterparty risk management. It's so hard. And, uh, but uh, I realized that, uh, you know, in the interbank space, um, the architecture is already decentralized. So the idea is basically bring it this uh, architecture to rebuild into the smart contract and solve it. Um, so also the biggest problem for banks is basically the global regulation called Basel, uh, Basel framework. Uh, based on the Basel framework, if banks have to hold cryptocurrency, the risk weight is 1,250%, which is so high. It's basically, basically it says, please don't touch crypto. This is a banking regulation. It's defined by the um, BIS, Bank for International Settlements. But it's going to be changed, but it's, this is the major reason why banks really don't like crypto. And also, Tratify has their own challenges. They don't have a global interest rate exchange. They don't have like a global, like a Binance like uh, exchange for the uh, interest rates market. Mainly because the, it is done by OTC. So let's say JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs, just they actually make a phone call. Hey, I want to do this deal and I want to customize deal. Can you do that? Two years interest rate is swap and fixed versus floating. And I, okay, let's done. And this is done on the front end, front office, and then middle office, back office can take care of it. So it's all the transaction has to be done on an OTC. This is a culture, and it is very difficult to standardize because of the nature of the interbank uh, transaction is multi currency, multinational, and multi. Uh, jurisdictions that is really hard to standardize. It's really hard to build a global level of you know the regulatory compliance. It's so hard. So standardization is really hard. And there's an ISDA, so International Swaps Dealers Associations, is creating a standard. Uh, there, it's a legal standard that we can reuse. And that's why, uh, well, this is how Interbank is working. But we borrow this knowledge and build everything into the smart contract. And, and a DeFi, okay, so DeFi can solve it. Probably DeFi can solve it. But DeFi has their own problem. It's by nature, it's um, um, in the uh, infrastructure level. It's building capital markets is not as simple as building a spot exchange. So let's say uh, Uniswap, Uniswap is a kind of a king of DeFi, but even for Uniswap, they can't work without Autobook, without Binance, because the, their exchange rate is basically the algorithmic price. But who, who can believe this algorithmic price is correct price? 
We never know, right? It's based on the pool-based, you know, local price. Is this local price is applicable to outside of the pool? I'm not sure. But uh, their white paper says, okay, there must be an arbitrager who can find the price gap and then fix the price. Because there's a huge market, spot exchange existing, like a Binance is a massive trading volume. So that's why somebody can correct the price and then Uniswap is working. So all the book dependency is really the key. And if you look at the capital market space, there's no order book players. And people try to avoid order book because of the difficulty. They are just uh, forking the pool-based mechanism. They make it a kind of a copy um, of the Uniswap. That is good, but definitely we need an uh, interest rate oracle to build the longer term maturity. And also handling time, meaning a secondary market liquidity is really difficult. The Aave has faced this uh, problem as well. It's really hard um, to guarantee the secondary market. Secondary market meaning a primary is just an initial composition, like a lending and borrowing. Okay, let's make it make it done. After it's done, I want to return money later on, but uh, I don't want to negotiate with the original counterparty. So this is a secondary market problem, and uh, we need a clearing counterparty in the middle. So something like this is is really a huge problem of the DeFi challenge, but uh, luckily we have enough experience in the traditional finance trading, so we are going to solve it. And um, yeah, so uh, overall, so this is a kind of summary. So the current DeFi players are basically like a deposit model and a pool-based deposit model. This is great. But what we want to have is like a capital market space, it's like a bond trading, and we need order book as a uh, price oracle. The, without order book system, it's really not gonna work. So that's why we are building. And then, if, so it's essentially, we need reliable yield curve um, that is, you know, could be used as a reference. So here's our, like a standardization, which is OTC bond trading clearing, and, um, yeah, this is zero coupon bond trading system and a fixed maturity standard. We are standardized using our um, knowledge and it's basically over collateralized lending services and we have margin call. And uh, yeah, we can take care of automatic mid price rolling, etc. So all of this is the solving the DeFi challenges and also Tradify challenges. And we launched 32 markets. We selected top four cryptocurrencies, and strategically, we chose Filecoin as a first choice, as a default currency. So yeah, Filecoin miners, uh, storage providers want to borrow or either lend out for the, and a high yield. And then, um, yeah, they can come and, and you know, just, just uh, go to the order book. There's no price negotiation. You can always find the, the best price on the order book system and how much you can borrow and lend. It's totally transparent. So it's really um, reducing the tra uh, transaction um, negotiation cost. And, uh, you know, this is the order book. And then this, the upwards is a yield curve. So you can think about you may be borrow you, you may borrow already a lot of Filecoin paying variable interest rates, really high interest rates, like a twenty percent. And if you look at the two years maturity, it says it's a ten percent, fifteen percent. You may think about uh, you know a borrow from two year and then lend out uh, return money for the short term. In this way, you can drastically reduce the cost of lending, which is. Uh, which is great. This is uh, the solution for kind of like a yeah, uh, institutional scale solution. And uh, in our case, uh, we are actually creating a nice traction. We keep growing our community size. In April, we were like number five, but actually every one month we surpassed like Aave and DYDS. It's this massive DeFi project, but uh, we are creating kind of a momentum to become the top DeFi. So we are so proud of it. The becoming the infrastructure to the pool-based other uh, DeFi project. So we want to grow together. And I have a news here, sorry for over time. Uh, Filecoin is finally listed in Japanese exchange. It took more than two years. The main reason is really difficult because the coin has to be approved by Japanese financial services agency. And it has to be you know, white listed. And their requirement is so hard. But luckily, I mean, finally, um, it's listed 
just a couple weeks ago. So I'm so happy because it's so positive for you know the Japanese data business provider and then storage provider, potential storage provider can um, uh, can <laughs> uh, convert Filecoin into Japanese yen. So it's so nice. And then you know, think about Japan. Um, actually, it's it's super positive. It's totally different. So so contrast compared to the U.S. regulation. So yeah. Here's a Shiozaki san is a Web3 uh, project team uh, secretary, and he's a person who actually promoting Web3 and changing the law. So he has a power to change the law. It's very different from SEC. SEC is a regulator. They can't change the law, but he can change the law. He actually changed the law, and the last month, Japan changed the Payment and Settlement Act and allowed major banks to issue stable coins. So it is a first nation legalized stablecoin business. So it combined together, it really has a strong um, promotion for the Web3. So a lot of things happening, but the, I, I wanna share why Japan can take such a, just, <laughs> such a brave action. It's, it's rooted from this uh, global uh, regulators. This paper is really the um, important paper issued by BAS. So it gives banks a really clear guideline. Hey, banks, you can, you can hold stable coin. You can hold uh, traditional asset back coins without, you know, costing a high high risk weight ratio. In the past, I, I told uh, one thousand two hundred fifty percent, but no longer applicable. So banks are safely hold stable coin, and also on top of that, Group Two is a Bitcoin and Ethereum. Banks can hold up to 2% of tier one capital. This is massive. I actually um, enveloped you know, calculations. If all banks allocate 1% of tier one capital to Bitcoin, it is $3 trillion. Three, so it's so huge. It's a six times as a, the current Bitcoin size. And that is why BlackRock is now doing the Bitcoin um, ETF. So it's, everything is put together. So the, all the traditionalizing, traditional money is f almost coming into this space. So we have to be ready for a huge amount of money coming into this crypto space. So we need more people working on this. So this is the size of the uh, institutional grade market. On the right is a centralized, on the left is decentralized. We need DeFi players more because a huge amount of money is coming into the space. So yeah. Uh, it's running out of time, so this is just a summary. Uh, I think the current uh, DeFi covers one to three. Technically, okay, operational security, liquidity supply we have, but we need to have risk management. DeFi tends to get hacked, right? So or market manipulation. It's really hard to solve. C cannot find via the security audits, but. Uh, we, yeah, we try to find a, find the problem, vulnerabilities, and regulatory compliance. Technically, zero knowledge KYC is coming becoming a more popular. So I think this um, this is going to be solved by technology. So I'm so happy to be in this uh, uh, momentum. So um, thank you very much. Um, I think uh, it covers the potential of the DeFi. So please get ready for the huge amount of money coming into this crypto space. Thank you. <laughs>